situated in the northern plains of the United States, east of the Rockies, along the South Dakota-Wyoming border, is a small mountain range, the Black Hills, rich in cultural and political history and natural beauty. To the Lakota Sioux, the Black Hills were Pahasapa, considered the origin of their people and the center of the universe. On Bear Butte, the Cheyenne were handed their sacred arrows, and Indians still come to pray. Less than 20 miles west, a mile high, gold prospectors located one of the richest deposits of gold on Earth, the Homestake Claim, the largest producer of gold in the Western Hemisphere. Colonel George Custer led the first major expedition of whites into the Black Hills in 1874, confirming rumors of gold in the unexplored Indian Territory. A stampede of gold seekers followed. Deadwood soon became the metropolis of the hills as thousands from all over the country hastily set up mining operations in Deadwood Gulch. A large outcrop of gold ore was discovered in what would become the city of Leed and the home state claim was filed in April of 1876. George Hurst and other California investors supplied the capital necessary to mine and mill the rich ore. Gold panners found security rather than wealth in a mine that would outlive them all. The gold rush camp became a mining and milling center, which it has remained in modern times. Tourists lured to the Black Hills by their natural beauty and Old West character provide a source of income for many local residents. But the home stake mine has been the lifeblood of the economy in the Northern Hills for well over 100 years. Indeed, 12 years longer than South Dakota has been a state. Homestake today is the oldest continuously worked mine in the free world. But prosperity and employment from the mine also had a price. For each ton of ore mined and processed, less than one-fifth of an ounce of gold has normally been obtained. So every ton of ore mined produced nearly a ton of waste, called tailings, a finely ground, powdery sand, containing arsenic and other heavy metals, such as zinc, chromium, and copper, natural to the gold-bearing rock like the gold itself. Added to the tailing from the gold recovery process were toxic chemicals, mercury and cyanide, 133 pounds of cyanide daily, according to a 1960 study, and 12 to 40 pounds of mercury daily. Homestake disposed of this waste, as had miners in the Black Hills from the time of the gold rush. Tailings were dumped into a convenient stream. Although much of the waste sand was returned underground, 3,000 tons per day were discharged directly into Gold Run Creek. The discharge in June 1971, according to the EPA, totaled 312 pounds of cyanide, 240 pounds of zinc, 72 pounds of copper, and over 2,700 tons of other solids, including arsenic iron sulfide, daily. From Homestake Mine, Gold Run Creek Battleship Gray flowed one half mile down its course underneath the highway between Leed and Deadwood and into Whitewood Creek. Clear until it met Gold Run, Whitewood there assumed the same gray texture. Raw sewage joined the pollution of Whitewood Creek at many points. Neither town felt the need to treat sewage, which would disappear anyway in mine tailings already polluting the stream. A boom town labyrinth of sewers and drainage pipes emptied raw sewage into Whitewood Creek. Residents ignored the pollution as best they could. I guess I've been conditioned not to look at the creek or really think about it. Somewhere along probably my childhood I, I learned that this creek was just a necessary evil and that it had to be here, and there wasn't too much to do about it. So I've just, I try not to think about it or even look at it. The good Lord will clean it all out when he gets ready. You ever see any fish in the stream? No. Never has been, as I know of. My father's been here since 76. Although all other waters in South Dakota were Class A and could not be legally polluted, 
1935, the state classified Whitewood Creek as Class B water, suitable for carrying waste. A 1960 study by the South Dakota Department of Health, however, found that the Belle Fouche River, a Class A stream, was also polluted as Whitewood Creek flowed into the Belle Fouche. 20 miles of the Belle Fouche were devoid of aquatic life. University of South Dakota filmmaker Richard Fry dramatically documented the pollution in 1969 in his aptly titled film, River's End, for the State Department of Game, Fish, and Parks. That department's study in 1965 had documented pollution 110 miles from Gold Run Creek, through Whitewood Creek, through the Belle Fouche River, into the Cheyenne River. Although the pollution was not as readily visible, it was soon measured all the way to the Missouri. The state and federal environmental agencies captured and analyzed fish from the Wahi Reservoir throughout the 70s. And we have about 11 ounces. Sample fish were weighed, measured, logged, and filleted. Edible portions of the flesh were tagged and frozen for shipment to the South Dakota State Health Lab in Pierre. Yeah. The laboratory analysis employed vigorous chemical digestion. Traces of mercury, reduced to elemental mercury vapor, were measured. Though the stringency of the FDA guideline of 0.5 parts per million was controversial, the initial surveys found mercury in amounts above federal guidelines in the flesh of fish from the Cheyenne arm of the Oahe Reservoir. The trail of contaminated water extended halfway across the state of South Dakota. In June 1973, the state posted signs warning fishermen of the potential danger. But there was another concern as well. The South Dakota Geological Survey detected arsenic in wells in the floodplains of the Whitewood, Belle Fouche, and Cheyenne streams, where tailings had been deposited over the years. Contamination by the effluents from Lead and Deadwood was a growing concern. To the State Department of Environmental Protection, the cleanup of Whitewood Creek was a priority. Whenever our department tries to solve another pollution problem in the state, we're always questioned about what we're doing at, at Lee Deadwood Homestake. So I think it's a question of our credibility with the citizens of the state when they realize that the severe pollution problem is existing in the Lee Deadwood area. It is the most serious water pollution problem in South Dakota. It is definitely impairing beneficial uses downstream of the discharges. In a semi-arid climate in which these streams were life-giving arteries used for irrigation, for livestock, as well as for sport fishing, the tailings and waste so long tolerated had become a problem. When the extent of the mercury pollution became known, Homestake Mining Company altered its refining process to eliminate the use of mercury for gold amalgamation. In fact, since the mid-60s, Homestake commissioned numerous studies of tailings disposal. The EPA, the state, and a newly formed sanitary district endorsed a plan for a 290-acre impoundment and wastewater plant eight miles downstream in Centennial Valley. Centennial Valley was one of the most productive agricultural areas in the Black Hills, with ranching operations as old as Homestake. A Save Centennial Valley Association was organized to voice concerns about potential harm to the area groundwater and to protect traditional uses of the valley. The water supply that might come right out of that Centennial Valley area. The Centennial Valley area is the recharge area. The state soon abandoned the Centennial Valley concept and directed the sanitary district and Homestake to separately treat their wastes in their own backyard. 